Hey YouTube! Today I want to show you my fuel tank. I've got a handful of changes I gotta make. I'm going in an electric fuel pump, which will be in the tank. Thanks Dave. Uh, he's the one that told me not to mount a fuel pump outside the tank because it's just noisy and irritating. So he created a lot of work for me. Uh, Dave's good at that. But, uh, so I'm glad I'm doing it. Uh, it'll be a much nicer unit when I'm done. But, it added a bunch of complications to the project, things that I had never done before, so I had to do a bunch of research, I had to try to figure out how I'm doing it. And yesterday, I put in a new sending unit ring, done a bunch of little mods, and it really worked out well. So it was a good day, and I just wanted to show you. I've got a few more things to do. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be doing on those, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, let's start out by going over the fuel sending units. This here is the original uh, 72 El Camino fuel sending unit. Basically it has a sock, which is kind of a pre-filter for the fuel. And then this lever arm is the float. And that's what operates your gas gauge. Let you know how much fuel is in the tank. Just one line coming out. Just fuel coming out, uh, which gets drawn out by the fuel pump that's mounted to the engine. So, real simple. Notice the size, the diameter of the uh, mount. Notice the cut out old mount. <clears throat> Here is a fuel sending unit out of a 1986 Cadillac something brome. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was a fuel injected vehicle. A throttle body injected. So this has a fuel pump on it um, and then the same uh, float type device to tell you the fuel tank. So this is the uh, pre-filter sock. This here is the fuel pump itself and then there are actually three lines on this one. So one is the pressurized fuel coming out, the first one here. The second one is actually a fuel return. And if you look, that fuel return comes all the way to the bottom. And so excess fuel that's not used by the engine comes all the way back and gets entered into the fuel tank. But it has to do it all the way at the bottom. It can't be sprayed in from the top. It has to go under the liquid fuel level so it's not aerating and bubbling and things like that. And then the last one is a vent tube which just gets hooked up up here. So I'm gonna end up using this tank, the original 72 El Camino has vents already built into it, three of them actually. So we'll get rid of the vent tube, but we'll end up with the uh, pressure and the return line. So uh, again, notice the size difference in the mount. That is because to get this thing into the tank, you have to drop that in. Or actually, I always do this wrong. You have to, you have to drop the float in first, and then the sock will go in as much as you with two hands, and sit like that. Of course, that's too tall, but we'll get into that in a minute. What I wanted just to show was. Do this one-handed, it's a real pain. Okay, so what I wanted to show is the different sizes of the, uh, the mounts. So this is the old one, and this is the new one. So what I ended up having to do was cut this out, and then I actually silicon brazed the, uh, with a TIG welder uh, the new ring in. It actually fit in this recess fairly nicely. I had to take a body hammer and, and remove an indent over here. Um, and then this sat down in, a couple of uh, vice grip C-clamps held it nicely. And then this is called TIG brazing. So it's done with the TIG welder. And you can see it's, mine is not the most beautiful. There's some parts that are not too bad. Come on, focus. So right there it's not too bad. Towards the back, I blew a hole in the tank, so I had to fill that in. But it's take brazing. So the difference between brazing and welding, brazing is, is like a soldering process. You're melting a filler rod that's melting to both pieces. When you're welding, you're actually melting the parent metal. 
So you're melting the metal and then adding a filler rod. So this isn't as hot, so it doesn't uh, melt the actual tank unless you screw up like I did back there, but I was able to fix it. So it actually worked out pretty well. The good thing for me is this tank has had no, has not had fresh fuel in it in over 10 years. The fuel that I took out of this a year ago was so old and bad that I couldn't light it on fire with a propane torch. So this tank has been dry for a year and the fuel that was in it was really old before that. So um, I didn't have any, you know, I took, I cleaned it, I left it out in the sun, uh, aired it out as best I could for a long time. Um, but, so that worked out well. So now I need to, tonight's project, this, unit is 10 inches tall and this tank is seven inches deep so turn this this way it's a little easier to see i think so what i'm going to end up doing you can see the fuel pump is broken here by a uh, or broken off the main line by a rubber hose so what i'm going to end up doing is, is just removing this hose clamp and then i'm going to slice this line off up here and it'll take exactly three inches out which is what i need and then the fuel return line and the uh, float i'm going to end up cutting right about here and then right about here i'm going to put a sleeve over both and then again some tig braze and braze that on there and that should move everything up to seven inches without too much trouble then i'll have an in tank fuel pump uh, the other thing I wanted to show real quick was this, what I used. So I got to clean this thing out when I'm done, um, which is really kind of a pain. This is called an air nibbler. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight version, uh, but it works quite nicely for light gauge material. So instead of a die grinder or a saw that would have created a lot of little dust and really fine particles that could clog this up, this filter, this nibbler uh, there's a little plunger, uh, sheet metal goes, let me see if I can do this one hand. So the sheet metal actually goes in this little slot and this little plunger moves up and down and actually will slice little pieces off. And I'm going to show you a little piece right here and we'll see if we can focus and I'll show you how small it is. I'll use an animal cracker and that's how small those little pieces are. But they're big enough that they're not like abrasive dust. So inside the tank, I put a magnet. So most of them stuck to that. And the few that didn't stick to that are still floating around in there. What I'm going to end up doing is filling the tank up with water a couple times, uh, flush it out, and then I'll actually take a wet dry vac and vacuum the rest of it in there. And any, the couple little of these ones that are left, um, I may stick a magnet in the tank and leave it in there, glue it in there. But either way, they're not gonna plug up this sock with just those little fine things, so. Yeah, after that, like I say, tonight I'm gonna get that shortened up. And then this tank will be ready to go in the car. Tomorrow my electrical supply should be here. And uh, we should be getting close to firing this thing up, so. Thanks for coming. I just wanted to show you that stuff. Like I say, it was a good day. New stuff I hadn't done before, and I think this is going to work out quite nicely. Thank you, Dave, for your help on this one. See you again soon. Thanks. So just a quick update. This is the uh, final product. I got the uh, everything all modified. The original fuel sending unit was about 10 inches tall. Now we're down to just under 7 inches, so it'll fit in the tank. Uh, I ended up cutting off the main pressure line and then just the rubber hose attached. And then on this side, um, it's a little bit hard to see. So the original hose or original pipe comes down about a half an inch from here. All the way down to here is the 71 or 72 El Camino fuel sending unit. And then at the bottom is the remainder of the Cadillac return hose. The reason I went back to that was because it had the mount for the the base mount for the fuel pump built into it. So there's one weld right here. 
and one weld right here, braze I should say, and then the capacitor, I actually had to cut that off the other one and add that on here as well. So that's got brazed back on as well. So it's here, uh, I got it on the bench, uh, gonna hook it up to the power supply, just make sure I didn't screw anything up too bad, <clears throat> and then it'll go into the tank. So just wanted to show you the final product. Hopefully it'll go in the car tomorrow. Thanks.